My name is Roger Bowley. My field is theoretical physics. So this, this is the paper by Turner and Bowley way, way back in 1985. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see what it is? And you can see these are things called the vector potential. There's the pair of two coils making a field gradient. And there's a page of maths involving Bessel functions. We never teach students Bessel functions as undergraduates. We don't teach postgraduate students. It's part of the arcade knowledge you get when you do research for 20 years, odd years. There's the screening pair. There the saddle coils making a pair to provide gradients. I only worked on this for one month. Only one month. I didn't realise its significance. I still don't really understand its significance. Most people have heard of MRI and think it's absolutely fantastic because previously surgeons had to slice you open to see what was inside you and what was going wrong. And this is a way of seeing in real time what's going on inside your body because the time for each image is less than 50 milliseconds. So this is a fantastic technique for looking inside in a way which is not very harmful, except that I believe it's extremely noisy. Mansfield's invention of MRI, which he did in about 1972, required three gradients, magnetic field gradients, going this way, of the magnetic field which is pointing that way. So that's too technical. All Bob Turner and I did was to work out mathematically how you would screen those coils perfectly from the outside world. And that meant you could put a screening coil outside here, have a gradient coil inside there, the patient in the middle, and the whole thing surrounded by a superconducting magnet. And that's the basic design of MRI machines worldwide. They might have smaller things just to go around your head, so this thing was taken up by the industry immediately after we did it. Mansfield put us on the patent which he'd already written. So this is one of the big patents that he had on MRI way back in 1986. And we had to go to court to fight for this because General Electric said they'd discovered all this beforehand. And we beat them just because Mansfield got in early by about six months. So I get a small part of a huge patent income and I'm one of the few theoreticians who's actually invented something. Well, no, Mansfield invented it, gave the idea to Bob Turner. I just provided the way into the mathematics to solve it. So I feel intensely proud about that. In a hundred years time, they'll look at the maths and say, they had to use primitive maths. Why didn't they use the latest technology? And, and there's a beauty to the maths that people don't understand and it tells you a bit about the history of the subject, that people started off with Maxwell's equations, and there were 24 of them, and then they were read down into four, and I'm just using one equation, which I think is really elegant. And they'll look in 100 years' time and say, what are MRI machines? They don't exist anymore because um, there's no helium left, and we can't cool things down to low temperatures, so we won't be able to make things superconducting. And they'll be saying, what's a superconductor? So in 100 years' time, the whole technology will have disappeared. Um, I'll be yesterday's headlines. But I'm proud of this. I'm proud of this. <laughs> I see myself as a little clown, rather like Newton on the beach, picking up a nice shiny pebble. And he said that's how he felt he, what he was, he, that everything was waiting to be discovered. I feel like that all the time. But in the last 18 months, I've had three FizRev letters published. I'm still finding new things to do, and that's what's keeping me mentally young. There is this idea that physics is largely covered already with quantum mechanics and everything else, but when you're up against uh, a problem which hasn't really been solved and been pushed around and kicked around for a while, it's quite exciting because you hope that you will find the key to unlock something else. And there are lots of places like that in everybody's field. Who knows what will come up? It's always by chance. That's the excitement of it, bloody hell. <laughs> and and uh, people do it because it's exciting and fun to find out things which other people haven't really understood before. So this is the paper. I'm going to fold it in two, another two. My last copy, I've got to lift this up. Ooh, you're not joking, it's heavy. And put it in there and down it goes. Goodbye, sweet paper. I wouldn't like to find that in my garden. <laughs>
Okay, yes, that, that should be strong enough to last for a few years. <laughs>